Hello viewers, welcome to Sada High School Zana e-learning platform. My name is Natma Yamzamil. I will come you to physics class A level. And we are looking at physics paper 2, uh, strictly section D. And we had gone up to, in the last episodes, up to electricity. And we had stopped and at uh, electrical resistivity. And we had seen that resistivity is defined as the resistance resistance across opposite faces of one meter chunk of a conductor or a TDU. And even I looked at examples one, two, three. Now we are going to look at the last example so that we can master this and got something else. The last example is number four. They are saying a wire of diameter D Length L and resistivity rho forms a such a rule. Current enters and leaves at P and Q. Show that the resistance R of a wire is given as that. I was giving, of course, if this is a wire AB, like they were seeing this wire, it is AB. But of course, I can do this and make a rule. So this is the wire I'm talking about. Now, if this wire is of length L, because they are saying the wire is of length L. And I pick a sample here, I call it X. The distance from here to here will be L minus X. Of course, a wire is a resistor. It means we have this resistor at the same time the other resistor. Now, from the other formula of ours, which was R equals to L out of A. Let's fit this one. R A P. R A P to be same as rho L minus X because that's our length out of A. Remember this wire is uniform, it has same diameter, uh, same area and etc. And R P B to be same as rho uh, L, I mean rho X out of A. Now, since these are two wires, two different wires separated, now we are going to combine them together to form one wire. They must be, be put in parallel. Thus, R equals to R1, R2 over R1 plus R2. We are going to see this one in the next lesson. How these resistors are connected and how this one is coming up. But of course, if you have two resistors in parallel, the effective resistance, according to all level work, is all about product over the sum. So this gives us, which will give us this is our R1, rho L minus X, then out of A, times, let me use a dot, times R2, R which is rho X out of A, then divided by the, product, the sum, which is rho L minus X out of A, plus rho X out of A. This gives us the product that would be rho squared, x into rho minus x rho minus x out of a squared then divided by the LCM is a according to this that will be rho into l minus x then plus rho in rho x then from this we shall take the multiplication sign then we shall get something like uh, uh, this one will be my pride and I take the reciprocal I get rho, rho squared, x into L minus x out of A squared times A out of rho into uh, L minus x then plus x. This one goes with this one, one here. Then we shall make with rho squared x, L minus x, then divided by A into uh, rho L because this one has gone away when you have minus x plus x as is 0 so from this one row will go the other one remain with rho x into L minus x then divided by A L now this is a cylindrical wire if the cylindrical wire means our area is pi R squared which is same as pi D 
squared out of 4. That's what we're going to put here. So we shall have this one given as rho x uh, into L minus x, then divided by area, which is given as pi d squared out of 4, then L. Now, this 4 will move up, we shall remain with 4, because it's a reciprocal, 4 rho x into L minus x, then divided by pi d, pi d squared, then L. Remember what we, have, what we were asked to prove was, show that, show that the resistance is given as 4 rho x L minus x out of pi d squared L. Therefore, we shall say our resistance is 4 rho x into L minus x out of pi, pi d squared L, as, as required. That's how, we can get, that's how we can get the resistance of that wire. The assumption is that since these are two wires, whenever we are going to connect them, they must be in parallel connection. Parallel what? Connection. And we shall have everything worked upon and we get what we want from there. Now, we have seen resistivity and we have defined it as the resistance across opposite faces of one meter tube of a wire. How can we determine that resistivity? Experimental. In other words, we are going to look at an experiment to determine the resistivity of the wire of the material. Experimental. Now, in the last episodes, we looked at the introduction part of this topic. And I'd shown you the gadgets to use in determining in this so-called electricity. One of them was a meter bridge. And that meter bridge had gaps, had a left and right gap. So we are going to use that instrument to determine the resistivity of the wire. Because we had said the, the purpose of that, resist, that wire, that meter bridge, was to determine the resistivity, to compare the resistances, to do very many things. And now we are going to look at one of the applications of that meter bridge. We are determining, 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 determining the resistivity of a wire. We are carrying out an experiment to determine the resistivity of a wire. Now, we must have a meter bridge. This first bare meter bridge here, we have that, we have this. These are the gaps that we are talking about in the other first in the other diagram. So this is the wire. This wire was mounted on a bridge. And the purpose of that wire was to measure anything we wanted. Therefore we have we have a source of EMF. We can have this. Then we have these gaps, these are terminals. Now, in this terminal, we are going to put a wire whose resistivity is needed. Then in this terminal, or the gap, we are going to put there what you call a standard resistor. In other words, a resistor whose resistance is known. Then here, we are going to have the other galvanometer of ours, the center zero galvanometer. And of course, we have a joke tapped here. This length, we call this one X, LX, then the other one is LS. This is BD, driver cell. Driver cell. Now, the circuit diagram is arranged as shown on the board. With a standard resistance one in the right hand gap, Whereas a, a, resist, a wire whose resistance is to be done in the left hand gap. Now from that, this jockey J is tapped along wire AB until the galvanometer shows no deflection. This wire is of length L and we are going to look, it, look at its resistance R at Rx. We are saying that jockey J which this one is J, is tapped along wire AB until this galvanometer reads zero diffraction. Whenever that one happens, you take the readings of the balance point 
That is AP and PB. And AP is, is recorded as LX and PB as LS. Using the meter bridge balance, we shall get our RX equaling to LX out of LS times RS. Where am I getting this one from? This one is read by you on a meter rule, because this is a meter rule there. This one is read by you, and this one is a standard resistor whose value is known from there. It's a 10 ohm, it's a 5 ohm, it's known, it can be read from there. Then from this, if these ones are known, remember using a wire. Which wire can be reduced in size and be reduced in, the, in terms of distance and length and do anything you want? This is the first value. The experiment is repeated for different values of this X. If at first was 10 meters, we are going to have 12 meters, we are going to have 16 meters, like that. And each time, we are going to get different values of LX and LS. Those values will be substituted here. In other words, as you are getting this and this, this value is constant because it's a standard resistor. But this one and this one will keep on changing depending on the value that we are going to have here as your L, as your X. So we shall have our X changing maybe in meters. Then also we have our RX changing. Of course, from this we are going to be measuring LX, we are going to be measuring LS, then we are going to be having RX. This is the table of results we are going to have. Then from this, if this one is changing, we are giving, we are getting this one and the other one. This one also coming out. From there, since we have various values of these ones, we are going to have a graph protein of Rx against, against x. This one against x. And its slope is obtained. Since we have Rx and we have x, you can easily plot a graph. After plotting a graph, its slope is obtained. After getting the slope of that graph, the resistivity of the, of the wire can be obtained from S pi d squared out of 4. Where are we getting this pi d squared? Remember, we can easily get the area. The wire, we can first determine the, the diameter of the wire. How do we determine the diameter of the wire? By use of micrometer screw gauge. You get this one. This one is a constant. This is a value obtained from a slope. After getting this value, we shall get our resistivity from S pi d squared out of 4. What could be the theory of this experiment? Now, from the beginning, we are saying, we are saying that, that uh, R equals rho L out of A. Remember, I have said we must put a graph. To put a graph, you must have an equation of line, which is always given as y equals mx plus c. How is this one coming up? Now, from this, this is L equals to this one. What's area? Area is, this, this wire is a saturator in nature. Therefore, we can get air from pi r squared, which is the same as pi d squared out of 4. Since, since r equals d out of 2, when I square this side, I also square the other side. Therefore, I will get d squared out of 4. That's what I'm putting here. Then if I do that, I will get my r equals to rho l, then divided by pi d squared out of 4. This will be a multiplication sign when I take the reciprocal. Therefore, we shall have... Uh, 4 rho L out of pi d squared as my R. Now, assuming, assuming of course, x equals L. In other words, this is my x. We shall have our Rx equals 4 rho x out of pi d squared. Now, from here, we are putting a graph of Rx against this. There are what means is a constant. Remember from here, we, are plot, we always plot a graph of y against M. And we find this is the gradient, which is termed as a slope. Therefore, we are also having this kind here, this situation here. This Rx equals to 4 rho out of this one. Uh, let's have a short break. We shall pick from there.